Well, hello and welcome to Noob Eden. This is a channel dedicated to helping those who are new to the video game EVE Online. My name is Billy Daniels and I fly with a corporation called Aideron Robotics. Now, I think my plan here is just to produce some regular short grabs of video content just to help the total new player get a foothold in this amazing video game. But before we do that, I thought I might try and answer this question. Why should I even play? EVE Online. So in this first episode, I want to take five minutes or so, it's probably going to be longer, let's be honest, and try and cram in 10 reasons why you should be playing EVE Online in 2021. Now bear in mind, this is just my opinion, and it's just a real high level overview. So each of these topics we could probably discuss for hours. So if I miss something you think is important, let me know and we can look at it in a future video. So the first one, and in no particular order, it's just how they come to me, is the depth of gameplay. So let me just so right up front, EVE is not a game for everybody, I get that. It's a science fiction MMO and it really can be a bit of a slow burn. So if you're into games like COD, Fortnite, Rainbow Six, where there's short, sharp, high action, high adrenaline sessions, and if you screw up, you have a shock, or you just reset or respawn and you try again, then you may not be comfortable with EVE. There's a depth and a complexity to EVE that means things can take time to develop. Now that's not to say there aren't moments of high action and adrenaline, there certainly are, but those can be interspersed with time spent planning, building, hunting, researching, hanging out, or just stargazing. So it's not unknown for players to spend days, weeks, months, or even years working towards an objective. Uh, for me, it's kind of like an intersection of, I guess, chess and science fiction where it comes together. So there can be an incredible satisfaction planning something out and just seeing it come to fruition or having to modify the plan on the go based on the responses of other players. So EVE as a game gives you an incredible array of tools and scenarios and play styles and over 7,500 solar systems just to help you go and find your place in the game. It's what's known as a sandbox game. There's no real end game where you can say, yes, I've won, I've finished. In fact, many veterans joke that the only time you win EVE is when you finally retire and stop playing. For me, the second reason why you should be playing EVE Online is spaceships. At its core, EVE is about spaceships. There are currently a, uh, 345 different ships in EVE, and each of them is capable of being customized and fitted out in a variety of ways. So you start with a hull, which we, we call an unfitted ship, and that ship has various slots for you to add modules and rigs where you can modify its offensive and defensive capabilities. And uh, you can't access them all immediately. You need to unlock them over time by training your skills. This is EVE's way of leveling up. Uh, many of those ships have very specialized roles, or you could fly them solo or in fleets with others. Now, you could spend countless hours learning about the ships, their features, and what they're capable of. There's heaps of third-party tools to help you with this. One of the most popular, I'll link in the description, is called Pypha, um, and it's real art in, its, in itself, just fitting ships uh, to maximize their effectiveness. Finally, um, I think the vast majority of ship models in EVE are absolutely gorgeous. Now I've played some other sci-fi games like No Man's Sky and Elite Dangerous and look Elite Dangerous has some beautiful ships as well I get it um, but I don't think any of them compare to the quality of artwork and design that goes into EVE ships and if you add to this fairly uh, recently they added ship skins so you can even customize the look of your ship even more and we are talking about some world-class eye candy love it love it love it spaceships my third reason is the active development because you might be thinking well how can a game that is 17 years old be any good well the answer to that is active development the creators of uh, creators of eve ccp games have not stopped developing this game since its inception it keeps the game not only looking visually stunning but the gameplay is constantly being added to tweaked nerfed or buffed to create dynamic gameplay experience i mean the universe feels alive and dynamic and ccp work hard at making sure it stays that way and that's why there are so many veteran players who have played this game for a significant chunk of their lives. CCP also try to stay connected with the player base to make sure the game remains exciting and relevant. So one of the ways they do this is through the Council of Stellar Management or the CSM. This is a group of elected players who have high level access to the company and their developers and it's serious stuff including non-disclosure agreements, biannual trips to Iceland to meet with the developers to discuss the game's direction. This is like a, it's almost an unheard level of engagement between the developers and its player base, but it shows CCP's commitment to the long-term health and the ongoing development of the game. Number four is EVE's permanent history. I think for me this is probably the thing that separates EVE from most other games, is that you, this universe, it's persistent. There's no server wipes or do-overs. If you build something, it stays there until you pull it down or someone else destroys it for you. If you lose a ship, it's gone. You'll need to build or buy 
a new one. So the things you do, the decisions and the alliances you make, they stay as a permanent part of Eve's history. And that history is just littered with legendary stories of heroism, failure, treachery. I mean, it's, it's less of a game and probably more of a piece of science fiction whose narrative has been constantly written. And, and here's the kicker. You get to be a part of that narrative. You're part of those experiences, good or bad, that form that narrative and the history of EVE Online. No one's going to wipe the server and just pretend it never happened. So uh, this depth of history in EVE, and it's so rich, there's even been books written that chronicle the rise and fall of player empires throughout EVE's history, famous alliances and battles and famous players and fleet commanders and villains. They've, they've all learned their part in this piece of science fiction. And they'll be part of that history uh, as long as Eve exists. So uh, you think books are not enough for you? How about statues? I mean, I can even get on a plane, fly to Iceland. Well, except for COVID, but we know you can fly again. I can fly to Iceland. There's a statue in Reykjavik where I'll find my character's name engraved, along with hundreds of thousands of others who were subscribed on the game's 10th anniversary. Eve has this sense of permanence about its history, which is amazing. Eve is also well known uh, for its player community. It's, it's got a well-earned reputation as having one of the most dedicated and supportive player communities of any video game. So I've personally made lifelong friends all over the world through the various corporations I've flown with in Eve. Not only that, but there's a rich history of content providers creating podcasts, blogs, YouTube and Twitch streams, and they can support you in your Eve journey. There's third-party developers who've made a great tools that can help you along the way and I might put some links in the description things like mapping tools ship fitting tools market information and a whole heap more prior to COVID Eve also had a thriving circuit of player gatherings worldwide where people could get together uh, in various places around the world get together in person and, and just to share their love of this video game so some of these were organized by the players themselves and some were actual official Eve gatherings organized by the developers themselves to draw people together now it's a bit of a disclaimer here, like any video gaming community, EVE has to suffer its fair share of trolls. Uh, so she certainly isn't perfect and has had some real negative experiences over the years, but these player groups in EVE are called corporations or corps, and mostly I would encourage all players to link up with a corp and engage in this social aspect of the game. Now if you find yourself in a corp that has a vibe you just don't like and doesn't suit you or you're not happy with it, leave it. Go find a new one. There's plenty of amazing corps out there that really want to help you on your Eve journey. What are we up to? Number six, artwork. Eve is beautiful. I mean, constant development and investment have, have ensured that despite her age, Eve remains one of the most visually stunning game environments available anywhere. The art team at CCP have achieved critical acclaim for their amazing work on the spaceships, the stations, the atmospheric environments that as pilots we interact with in Eve. It's truly incredibly engaging and it's a stunning place to be a part of. Now, there are times, particularly in some PvP engagements, where you might need to zoom out for a broader tactical view of the battlefield and you sacrifice some of those stunning graphics. I get it, that's true. But outside of these engagements, there's plenty of opportunities just to immerse yourself in the beauty of New Eden. In fact, this is so much a part of what I love about EVE that I've got a mouse button set that I can toggle my UI on and off. So I've got instant access between the functional UI display and that gives me all the information I need and then just the draw drop draw dropping vistas of me and my ship cruising through the universe so it, it's so gorgeous that is a big part of what I love to do uh, the artwork is amazing all right reason seven is building something that matters well it matters in as much as it's still a video game but the persistent nature of Eve and its single shard server mean that things that happen in Eve have consequences there's a value and there's importance to the things you do in Eve that most games don't have there are things you need to work hard to acquire. You, you need to work to acquire them. And because of that, they mean something to you. And because they mean something to you, it, it hurts when you lose them. It, it matters to you or, or it matters to others. Things just don't appear or spawn in Eve. You, you rarely get anything for free. Virtually everything in the game is manufactured by other players. And if you want something in your little corner of space, it doesn't just teleport there. You need to get it there somehow. So things need planning and execution to go right. Screwing up matters. There's something in Eve that Eve gives you that most games don't even come close to. I mean, not only does stuff matter to you, it can matter to other players as well. So, for example, one of my characters works for a freight company that moves items around the universe for other players. Now, that might sound boring to you, but bear in mind those items can be very expensive and need to get to very dangerous or remote corners of space, all while avoiding 
other players whose eve life is that of a pirate, making their living off killing pilots like myself and, and plundering my cargo as their means of making a living in eve. So if I lose something expensive, it doesn't just respawn. I don't just go and find my grave and get it all back. It's gone. Okay, And it's not just things that matter, it's people. So the pilot corporation I fly with has been in existence since April of 2009. That's over 11 years. I've got friendships that I've made, that I've built with my fellow pilots, uh, that yeah, so much so that I've had to you know, sometimes hauled myself out of bed just to help defend a solar system or structures for them. Why? Because in EVE, things matter. Number eight is PvP and the PvP shakes. Now you can play EVE for years and never get into a PvP fight with another player and just totally enjoy yourself. So PvP is player versus player combat and it's a, I guess it's the core of EVE's gameplay because it's this destruction of ships that drives manufacturing and the economy within the game. So as I've discussed, things matter in EVE and with the permanent nature of loss that means as the ships die they need replacing. Now how much these losses mean to you can vary. If I'm flying a cheap Tech 1 frigate worth a few million isk, then losing it is not a big deal. But if I'm flying around in a blinged out 3 billion isk cruiser with a head full of another 5 billion worth of implants, then I clearly stand to lose a great chunk of my wealth and the time that went into accruing it in a PvP encounter. And if there's a thing called the PvP shakes, it's that adrenaline rush that comes from combat, especially when you've got a lot on the line. Now, I've gotten more of the shakes in EVE than I have in any other game. Why? Because things matter. And while we're talking PvP, EVE gives you many options of how to engage in this gameplay. You could fly as a solo pilot in small game groups. You can get involved in the largest fleet multiplayer battles of any video game in existence. And that is official because EVE holds the Guinness World Record for the largest multiplayer video game battle at 8,825 concurrent players in a single battle. And that wasn't just some way back when EVE was young and fresh to the gaming world. No, this was October 2020. So some games just get better and better with age, apparently. Number nine on our list is the economy. Now, I've talked about the persistent nature of EVE's servers and permanent loss. So these things drive the underlying player-driven economy that is unique to EVE. The size and the scope of the economy in EVE is immense. So much so that for some players, that's that's all they do in EVE. Their gameplay is the market and the economy, trying to maximize profits where they can of this dynamic, ever-changing economy. People jokingly refer to EVE as spreadsheets in space, and I won't deny that sometimes the intricacies of just trying to maximize and manage your gameplay can certainly resonate with this, but I kind of object when people throw this out as like a to deride the game because let's be honest, it's usually just YouTube trolls who never play the game because you can play Eve in any way you want. If you don't like market and economy stuff, fine. Go and find the thing you love doing and go do it. Uh nine, ten, finally, meaningful free gameplay. Eve gives you the option to play for free. Now this is what we call an alpha account. As an alpha, there are some restrictions to how far you can progress in the game, but you do, however, get access to the full EVE client. I mean, the whole universe is yours to explore and engage in. You don't get a watered-down universe to play in. Alternatively, you can pay for a subscription which gets you what we call an Omega account, which doesn't have those same restrictions as an alpha. So as an alpha, you're limited to logging in on one account only at a time, so you can't run multiple clients, and you can only train up to 5 million skill points for free can inject further skills up to 20 and a half million um, which you can purchase as a result of your in-game activity or just buy them outright so you can ha be meaningful as an alpha in eve absolutely um, let's be honest your limited skills won't allow you to become a solo pvp god but you will have access to enough ships that you can be a valuable mem a member in fleets especially if you use those skills to specialize so for example it's not uncommon for an alpha pilot in a small e-war frigate to make a clutch play just crippling the abilities of a vastly more experienced pilot and, and ship just long enough to turn the tide of that, that fleet battle. Uh, or you might fly as a scout and just get that important suicide tackle on an enemy ship that allows the rest of the fleet to, to get this juicy kill. And everyone knows that happened because of you and trust me, the love is real in those situations. So that's it. That's my 10 brief reasons why EVE Online is a game you really should be playing or at least trying out in 2021. It's a beautiful, rich, deep, engaging universe that can be utterly intoxicating to be a part of. Now, just because she's 17 years old, don't for a second think she's over the hill. Life is full of things that simply get better with age. And for me, without doubt, EVE sits squarely in that category. Fly safe and see you in space.